Hi, this video is all about an interesting and important group of fossils called corals. These fossils are very useful at periods of geological time for dating rocks as zone fossils. Also, they can give us a lot of information about the environment of deposition of the rocks in which we find them, so therefore they're good fasces indicator fossils. Now, corals have lots of different aspects to their ecology. We, as geologists, don't really need to worry too much about this for A-level. But there are some useful points to pick out here. They create a, a, a calcareous skeleton made of uh, either aragonite or calcite, um, which is very, very uh, resistant to erosion. As a result, they have a very good fossil record. We can find several different types in some slightly different environments, but they can give us a great deal of information. Now, there are lots of different parts or morphological parts of a coral, but we only really need to worry about one of them. That's what we call the septum or in plural, septa. These are vertical blades that strengthen and, um, this calcite skeleton of a coral to give it its great strength. We normally find these in, in a radial pattern, as you can see in this uh, really well-preserved example. So the radial lines here, the ones that look like spokes on a bike wheel, are the septa. This is how we tell that a fossil is a coral, rather than, say, a burrow or a plant, which are perhaps the more, um, or the fossils perhaps we can confuse a coral for. Corals do occur in lots of different forms. Here we can see uh, the scepter on uh, another species, very clearly um, marked out. But in this case, as you can see, there are lots of different individuals uh, living together. How a coral lives is the other key definitive um, difference between them that we need to think about for A level. Solitary corals are where we have one individual living on its own. It creates a typically a cone-shaped fossil with, as you can see, one uh, place for one individual animal to live on. You can see the pattern of scepter here in the end on view on the photograph. Here are a few more examples where you can see the side of the solitary coral and also uh, the calyx, the place where the individual would live. The other type we need to concern ourselves with are what we call colonial corals. This is where we have lots of different individual uh, coral animals, what we call polyps, living together in one single structure. These type of corals are extremely important when it comes to reef building processes. They can create some quite spectacular and I think quite beautiful fossils. But they should be easily distinguished from the solitary corals we've just been looking at. Corals do tell us about the environment in which they were found. We still have corals existing today. We can uh, find reefs um, today where co corals are still growing. So we can apply our knowledge of uniformitarianism to interpret the environment. Particularly, these reef building corals have a very specific set of requirements. We find them in shallow water. 
there's a symbiotic relationship with photosynthesizing algae, algae, which means they need light. And in particular, they thrive in tropical or subtropical environments with warm sea. Also, the sea has to be clear. There isn't a, a plastic sediment input. There's lots of oxygen there to support the life. Usually quite a strong current as well, as these animals have to sit there and wait for the food to come to them. The salinity has to be fairly, fairly typical, fairly normal. Okay, they need to be able to extract calcium carbonate from solution uh, in the seawater and use that to secrete the calcite uh, for these very strong structures that they create. They have to be strong because these animals need to live where there's uh, a good strong current to bring them food. These fossils are interesting. Now what I'd like you to do is complete your uh, notes on these animals and then come into class with your interesting question about them. I'll see you then.